Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. It's Tube Microphone Day because this is the Mojave MA200, a cardioid-only tube condenser microphone. It costs around $1,100. Like always, links in the description along with all of the recording settings, which are also included in the doobly-doo. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First, everything comes in a hard shell storage box. You'll of course get the microphone in a separate storage box. You'll get a shock mount which comes with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a 16 foot 5 pin XLR to XLR cable, and the power supply and the power cable. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels pretty well put together as well as it should given the price. It has an all metal body, it has a metal mesh grill which does have a touch of give to it. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the bottom of the mic, you have a 5-pin XLR port. The power supply is made all out of metal. It has a nice clicky power switch, and there is no excessive wobble on any of the ports. And then as far as the manufacturing location, I can't find exactly what country they're made in, but it says they're assembled offshore, and then they go through QC and burn in in Burbank, California. For all of the specs, I will list them in the description down below, but I will also have them up on screen in case you want to pause and get a closer look at any of the graphs. Now I'm spinning around the MA200 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. On mics like this, I'm really starting to second guess doing the plosive test because I think everybody buying one and using one is going to use a pop filter. And secondly, I don't want to damage and ruin an $1,100 mic because that's a lot of money to flush down the toilet. But I'll do it. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and all of the mouth clickies and here is how it's sounding and I'm about to vomit. Now I'm about six inches away from the mic and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the MA200, and about four feet away from the Mojave MA200. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, I am now typing on the sad W and the spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated space. Now I want to see how effective the provided shock mount is at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see if it rejects that kind of noise. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Next, because I'm incredibly annoying, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. I don't want to tap it anymore. I think <laughs> I don't think you should do this with tube mics. Be careful with it. <laughs> now, because I know some people will criticize me for running the Mojave through a Focusrite interface, I also wanted to include a sample running the microphone through a Universal Audio X8 so you could hear it run through better preamps and better analog to digital converters. I will be switching back and forth between them. I have level matched them as close as I can in the analog realm, and then I will make sure they are level matched in post. And there you go. Quick spoken word comparison between the 18i 22nd Gen and the UAX8. Both recording 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Next, because I know there are analog junkies out there, I want to include a sample running this microphone through two outboard analog pre's. The first, the WA73EQ, gain set at 45, 
no EQ engaged. The second, the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II, gain set at plus 10, level at 3.5, no EQ, no compression. I will be switching back and forth between them so you can hear how it sounds. Both of them are running line level into the Universal Audio X8, so we are getting that kind of conversion, that quality of conversion, and that should be a good enough spoken word sample for you to hear how this microphone sounds running through higher end pre's. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that I'm reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available. And this lineup may not be the craziest that I've had on this channel, but this one is pretty dang good. So let's jump into it. Starting on the microphone that we're reviewing, this is the MA200 connected to the Universal Audio X8. Gain set at 37 dB, six inches away, and here's how it sounds. First up, we have a sibling of the MA200, the MA201 FET. This is a solid state cardioid only condenser mic and it costs $800, still connected to the X8, gain still 37 dB. There you go. How does this sound compared to the tube version of the mic? Back again for a palate cleanser, this is the MA200, nothing has changed, let's go to another microphone. Next I am on the AKG C414 XL2, which is a multi-pattern solid state condenser microphone, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. This costs around $1100, and here is how this compares to a tube microphone at the same price. I won't spend too much time because we have a lot more to go. This is a palate cleanser on the MA200. Let's do another one. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, TLM-103. This is a solid state cardioid only condenser microphone. It costs $1,200, six inches off, gain still set at 37 dB. Check the lower third. Let's go back to the 200 and do a bunch more comparisons. All right, we have the fourth palate cleanser on the MA200, still six inches away, gain still set at 37 dB. Let's go. Next, I am on the Sony C100, which is a multi-pattern condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. This costs around $1,400, still six inches away, gain still set at 37 dB. And here is how this compares to a tube microphone with a single polar pattern, no pads, and no filters. Let's go back and do some more. If I am not mistaken, this is the midpoint palette cleanser. Get a good feel for this and check the lower third. Let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the Sayuz SU023 bomblet. I think I got that right. Solid state, cardioid only, condenser microphone. This costs around $1,400, six inches off, gain at 37 dB. That's enough of that. Let's go back and do a couple more, I think. Hey, we're back again on the MA200 to clear out your ear holes. This is your auditory Q-tip. Gross. Let's do another comparison. Next, I am on the Loughton Audio FC387 Atlantis. This is a multi-pattern solid state condenser microphone, cardioid mode, no pad, neutral setting. This costs $1,758. I am six inches off. Gain is still set at 37 dB. Check the lower third because I will have to boost each of these microphones a bit differently. And let's go back to the Mojave MA200. I don't recall what microphone is next, but I can assure you that I spent money that I probably shouldn't have on it. So let's go to the next mic. Now I am on the Telefunken TF51, which is a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. It costs around $1,900. Cardioid polar pattern, six inches off, no pads, no filters, nothing on it. And here is how this compares to a microphone that is $800 less expensive. Let's go ahead and go back and do a bunch more, or a couple more. Hey, we are on the penultimate microphone, I believe. This is the MA200 palate cleanser. Let's go to the second to last microphone. You all knew what was going to happen. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI, $3,700, solid state, multi-pattern condenser microphone, cardioid mode, no pad, no filter, six inches off, gain at 37 dB. This is a very hot microphone. Let's go back because this is surprisingly 
not the final microphone in the comparison section. What's the next one gonna be? What, what, what? The U87 wasn't the last microphone? What does that mean? What could the final microphone be? This is your final palate cleanser. Get a good feel for it. Let's go to the last mic. That is right. If there is one microphone that I will include after the U87, it has to be the Neumann. Hello, Neumann! U67 Reissue, a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone, $7,500. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filters, and here is how this sounds. Does it sound $6,400 more expensive? $6,400 better? I don't know. I doubt it. I hate that I spent this much money. Let's go ahead and just go to the music test before I start questioning everything that I have done in this, this, yeah. I'm not quite sure what I need to do today And I'm not quite sure of all the bills I need to pay They just keep stacking up, I'm done I'm gonna sell everything and then I'll run I don't know why every single melody, go back and listen to them, ends on that third and then I run down to the root unintentional. I'm just realizing this now. Every single one ends on a third. Is there some psychological reason for that? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Let's go to the conclusion as cars rev their engines outside and ruin a recording. Dang, this microphone has got a lot of air to it. And first up, as far as pros, the mid frequencies on this microphone are insanely clear and open sounding. The off axis coloration on this thing is very inoffensive. So if you have sounds coming in from the side or if you're in a very reverberant room, that's not going to make it sound funky. And the shock mount that comes with this is absolutely fantastic and does the job extremely well. But then as far as cons, the microphone has a pretty low max SPL at 120 dB. So if you're extremely loud and you close mic, that may become a little bit of an issue. If the microphone does encounter any shocks or is moved a bit, it doesn't really handle that too well. And on that note, I'm assuming that's why they didn't include a microphone clip in the box, but I always prefer to have the option of the shock mount and the microphone clip in case you need to mic something up in a tight spot like an isolation cap. I also found that the mic picks up quite a bit of the room that you're in. If you're in a great sounding studio, that'll be fine. But if you're in a bad sounding bedroom, that may actually become an issue. And finally, just an FYI, this microphone is incredibly sensitive to low frequencies. So if you have any kind of low end rumble around you, whether it be traffic or an air conditioning on a rooftop, that's going to be picked up by this microphone and you need to be aware of that. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the MA200? As far as the overall sound, it offers quite a bit of heft in the bass. The mids are nice and clear, but they don't sound hollow. Then you have a very open and airy top end without sounding unnatural. It is not harsh, it is not brittle, but it is incredibly detailed sounding. On the electric guitar, I enjoyed the bass and the mid frequencies, but for my more aggressive sounds, I think the upper frequencies may be a bit much. On the acoustic guitar, though, I absolutely loved it, and that is because of the upper frequencies. I love how detailed and articulate it sounded. 
for singing vocals, I think this would work really well for that modern pop sound because of how clear the mids are and how airy the top end is. And for spoken word, I think it can work nicely. I enjoy the mids because they aren't closed off, they aren't congested, they are very open sounding, and a lot of people will love how airy the top end is, but for some people that may be a bit much. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Mojave MA200? Yes, I would for some people. First off, I think this thing sounds amazing on voice, and I really enjoyed it on the acoustic guitar. So if you're looking for a microphone that is cardioid only, has some heft in the low end, a clear midsection, and then a very airy top end that makes the Telefunken TF51 sound dull, which is supposed to sound like the Elam 251 sounds dull compared to this thing, then I would say you should consider this. But I do want to point out that the MA201 FET has a very similar sound profile to the MA200. It is solid state, so you don't have to worry about the durability and the longevity of the tube microphone, and it is $300 cheaper. The final two things that I want to say is, if you're looking at this microphone and hoping that it's going to eliminate a lot of the room tone and the reflections of your recording space, I don't think it will. I found that it picked up a ton of the environment that surrounded it, and if you record in a spot that has a lot of low-end rumble, air conditioning units, neighbors blasting music or traffic, this microphone is very sensitive to those lower frequencies, so you are going to encounter issues, you will need to high pass it or wait for that external noise to quiet down. That is it, that's all that I have for you today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down. These people are amazing. They support the channel at $5 or more. I love them, and I love you. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.